Welcome to episode 15 of the Hundred Proof Geek, a weekly show where two guys and two geeks discuss three random topics. Across from me, we have Jose Jimenez, or Agent Future. Also known as Hove O'Hulahan. Hove O'Hulahan. Rest in peace, nipples. Oh. Uh, so you can follow me on... Uh, How many Hulahans have we got at this point? Two? We got one. Two I'm, many. I'm his long lost brother. Oh. Hove O'Hulahan. Nipples oh. O'Hulahan. Hove died O'Hulahan. Died in a uh, tragic... Uh, nerd accident. Nerd accident. <laughs> what does a nerd accident sound like? Uh, well, he tried to mass produce nipples. Oh, I think a nerd accident uh, is like wrong. trying to masturbate to like Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has their own interpretation. And you forget to use the dirty. I, for one, <laughs> call it science. Science. Okay. Um. So, aside from that, you can. Uh, so, when you me. masturbate, you call it science. Yeah. <laughs> How many times can you stroke? I don't. I don't, don't want to go. I don't want to delve further down this rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. So where, can, where that, can we find you? Uh, at most hated underscore hove on um, PSN, Instagram, and Twitter. That uh, S M O S T H A T D underscore H O V. You learned how to spell. Like, like the lane. lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. There you go. David. <laughs> so I guess to his left we have David. Hey everyone, uh, you can follow me on the Instagrams as always, uh, pixel, Dave, pixel underscore Dave, uh, on Twitter, Pixel Dave one and I'm on Facebook sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, he does it for the gram. Oh, he does it for the gram. You know, the first time I heard, oh, I gotta put it on the gram, I was like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> like, are you gonna weigh it? Like, I like, thought gonna cool? happen? Like, I thought that's like, I thought, like, the gram is what old people said about Instagram, and young people said the whole thing, like, oh, I put it on Instagram, and old people say the gram, it's the reverse. It's the reverse, yeah. Uh... By the way, I am Jason Pentella or Jason86 on Instagram and Twitter. Titter? Titter. Nice. <laughs> oh, on the Titter. See? That's, the Nipple that's, uh, Experiment got you too. That, that's the adult website. Go check out Twitter. Go check out Twitter. Uh, Twitter, that's uh, J A Y S O N 86 because I was very creative. I threw a Y in there. You know what I was thinking about it today? I was like, what if I put a W H Y? <laughs> but it said Jason86, but with a W H Y. Because it's still a Y. You, you didn't get the, the word play of words. W H Y. Y. Why? Uh, oh, see, see, he's not it. funny. He's not it was. Funny. It was. I had to think too hard. Yes, then again, so. uh, but you can also uh, check me out on PSN. We play some games. Uh, Destiny, Far Cry, or I am totally mental. Dragon and Age. Dragon Age. Well, I mean, really can't. Like, yeah, we can kind of play. Dragon we can Age. multiplayer. So totally mental. Multiplayer. Uh, we can also check me out on XBLA or Xbox Live, which is uh, totally mental one. Although I don't really play much there. It's very. It's you know. It's it's a sad story. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the show started. You don't started. want to mention the, the, the lack of the other guy, since we're two guys, two geeks? No, you didn't hear him? The Silent Night, he's here. Oh, yeah? How you doing, is, The question for the viewers at home, <laughs> is is he here? Is he not here? Did we not introduce him? Is he missing in action? Or is he just being himself? Yeah, so we lost the Silent Night for this episode. He hopefully will be back for the next one. Uh, in the meantime, send him tons of hate mail. Um, <laughs> that's Reekin183, R-I-C-A-N-183 on Instagram and Twitter. Send him, send him dick pics, actually. He likes that stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's into that kind of thing. <laughs> is that what you get for not being able to That's make the show? That's We're going to send you dick pics. Jeez. Yep. I better make sure I make every yeah. episode. Uh, don't send your own dick pics, though. <laughs> yeah. Go- I mean... Go- I mean not- you're going to Google wait, dick pics? I'm, I'm not... <laughs> that can end up terribly wrong anyway. I, I'm not going to... All right. Send your own dick pics. If you I'm want. not going to receive them, so send all the dick pics. <laughs> your own dick pics. Your uncle's dick pics. Whoever <laughs> dick pics you want to send... Send them dick pics. Why are you taking the p- dick pics of your uncle? I don't know. I'm talking to the viewers. I don't know what their lifestyle Hope is like. Hope does some seri- very scary things in his free time. I'm that's, just saying. That's anybody, a nerd accident for you. That's a nerd accident. If anybody works in the, the wireless <laughs> retail industry and, you know, somebody comes in and asks you to transfer contacts yeah, we're gonna, and you come we're across... we go ahead and open the show proper. <laughs> Hope, why don't you lead us into the first topic? All right. So, on another note, uh, now that Spider-Man... Oh, I thought was going to say another token. Oh, no more tokens. No more, to- yeah, no more tokens. tokens. They changed it. We got magic cards. We got magic cards. Yeah, yeah I take tokens. Yeah. So now that uh, Spider-Man uh, has joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe, also known as the MCU, should Sony continue with the Marvel Civil War uh, timeline, or should they do a separate Spider-Man, continue that storyline? What do we think? So, I mean, the look-back story, though, is that... Uh, so, Sony has finally agreed to let Spider-Man be in this. We discussed this in uh, episode three. Uh, how, you know, should Spider-Man be a part of Civil War? The cool thing is that Sony is also going to be doing their ongoing story. And so I think I would probably like to see Miles Morales be Spider-Man. Explain. For the people at home who don't know who Miles okay, Morales is. Okay, right. So, so Miles Morales is part of, the, I believe it's the Superior uh, series of Spider-Man. And, no, I'm sorry, the Ultimate? 
He's a Spider-Man. Anyway, I think it's ultimate. He's one of them Spidey guys. He's a Spidey guy, right? So pretty much what is happening in this storyline, spoilers, going into, I guess, some of these Spider-Man choices, uh, Peter Parker dies. And <gasps> that's right. And so before Peter Parker dies, this young, this young boy who happens to be black and Hispanic, so it was very uh, controversial uh, when, when he came out as, to be Spider-Man, he was bitten by a similar spider that was being uh, worked on along the same spider that bit Peter Parker. Um, and so he didn't know what to do. Should he be a hero? Should he not be a hero? Um, he ends up finding out that Peter Parker dies. He's actually there as Peter Parker dies um, as Spider-Man. And he gives him the whole Uncle Ben storyline of great great power comes great responsibility. Side note, since Miles Morales is black and Puerto Rican, yes. did the other yeah. spider see that Peter Parker was white Got bitten by a spider and decided to become an equal opportunity spider. <laughs> oh, no. And bite the Spanish <laughs> and black guy. He's he covered the spider. <laughs> like it's, like, Miles it's like, is it affirmative action? He covered, he like covered. they sent out a message, a mass email to sure. all the spiders, like, hey, somebody got to bite the Puerto Rican guy over there. Well, black because, and you know, Puerto Rican. Covered, black like, and Puerto Rican. Two bases. <laughs> hashtag winning. That's actually very, very hashtag winning. Uh, hopefully. You know, I guess maybe. From the back. Uh, so, so, but what ended up happening was then he decides, yes, he, he he's gonna embrace this mantle. He's gonna become the new Spider Man. Uh, he also has some some different abilities in Spider Man. Um, so he he has like a shock web. I think it's like the, does he have like camouflage? Or yeah, he can go invisible, and he's got like spiky webs or something like something crazy with his webbing. Uh, but yeah, so Miles they Morales are organic webs, I believe. Yeah, it shoots yeah. out of his arms. But no, I think his it does hands. something. And also, the webbing can do something extra. As I well. think it's like poison or something. something yeah, stuff. poison maybe or something, something to that effect. <laughs> what's, it, what, does what? a spiky one? He got spikes. Like anyway, so what's cool? Spikes. What's cool about it though is that um, he adopts a black and red suit. Uh, which is really cool because he's black and red. What? And no. He's black and red? <laughs> no, I just thought it was really cool because I, I like the scheme of black and red Spider-Man. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, would have been cool if you had a black and white suit, but, you know, whatever. Uh, the black and red suit looks really good. Uh, it's a new twist to the Spider-Man story. He also fights these, I, I, I think it's Ultimate. I really do think it's Ultimate. But he, he fights these, like, super beat up versions of... Uh, the Goblin and, you know, some of these other character villains that he, yeah. you know, Spider-Man used. So much for being pros. prepared, huh? I was mostly prepared. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so... So villains on steroids is what we're going for. For the most part, yeah. The Venom actually is, like, super crazy. So are we... Well, hope we didn't get... Are we, are we going to look for characters? Are we hoping for characters maybe from the uh, sports wrestling, you know... Sports wrestling? Sports or wrestling... Most of those guys are on steroids anyway. So oh, we see. Oh, you're talking because of the beef up villains? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want to see... Uh, right no, like, I think let's, that... Let's get a Brock Lesnar. I mean, that, Kevin Nash has been those... Let's get a Brock Lesnar. Superhero movies and stuff. His neck <clears> is <throat> one shot away from popping. But Hov, you didn't, you didn't get to say what, 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 what story yeah, you well, want to see. What, what okay, so I'm definitely going to go with the Spider-Man from Spider-Verse with the the other storyline, which is pretty... Yeah, that's right. It's called the other storyline. Okay. Um, so there's a, a villain in there called Morlun, who pretty much is part of the uh, inherit inheritors. Okay. So basically, what him and his family do, do is they uh, they does do they, does do they uh, prey on uh, totems. Totems being um, superheroes who have Spider-Man characteristics come from the Beast, which is a spider. Um, they kill and eat them oh. to absorb their power. Uh, the whole family has you know super speed, super strength, right. you know. They dance on buildings, all kinds of crazy stuff. That sounds great. Um, but they have actually powers where they could drain any superhero, but they just prefer spiders. So a kind is that of, a waste of power? Yeah, I have no idea. I could be the Hulk, but I'd rather be a spider. Yeah, I mean that's that's a crazy thing for me. It's just like yo, know, if you have access to other superheroes, why would you only attack spiders? That's a good point. But I mean, the 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 weird and cool thing at the same time is they don't really gain any spider like powers, any Spider Man powers of. Any of the spider totems that they get, they just get stronger by eating any uh, totem, but prefer the taste of spiders for some reason. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure spiders are delicacy somewhere. Yeah, that'd be an interesting villain because it's a family of about six. There's a mother, father, the main villain who's first introduced is Morlun, right. and then he has uh, two so brothers, a an uncle, and a sister. 
So yeah. it, you know what I mean? It's it's a lot of people. I feel like they could expand on that. And that also leads to to everybody learning about Silk, right? Who's supposed to be uh, again another uh, a female character that was bitten by. They learn about Silk because of the same Spider Man. Spider Man frees her, and then she's like, "What the hell?" You, yeah, Spider Man after... thought he killed more little but more apparently can't die. Yeah, and whatever. Yeah, so it's really yeah, cool so though because Silk is a badass. Of none of them, none of them die because they figure out how to clone themselves and pass their consciousness. Ooh, it's pretty crazy. It's cheating. Or it's cheating. But mm-hmm. if, at some point they lose. I'm not sure, you know, if I want to go into that. <clears throat> so that's the storyline you want to see Sony pick up with yeah, this with that'd this be Spider-Man. insane because it's just like, oh, he's dead, we're done, and then boom. We cloned him. <laughs> done. Oh. I, I think I think and I know this would never happen, not in a million years. They're not gonna go back and do this, but I would love to see the uh maximum coinage storyline picked up. I would love to see Spider Man going up against uh Venom and Carnage and just doppelganger just and doppelganger and, and that whole storyline where like literally New York City burns for like a week. That's very true because it's just like this huge battle going on between Spider Man and everybody. And then you, uh, the Fantastic Four gets pulled right. in, Firestorm Cloak gets pulled in, Cloak and Dagger gets pulled in. So you have like you have like a real uh, a real problem with the Marvel Universe. You know, in, in the Marvel Universe, right. where all these characters get involved, and it's because of these three main characters: Spider Man, Venom, and Carnage. That would yeah. just be great. Um, I just don't see that ever happening. I think my concern with that is, is, is apparently the Spider-Man movies haven't been very popular, and a lot of that has to do with them adding too many villains. I just, so a Venom I just, and a Carnage. I just don't, I just don't think they've handled it well with the whoever they've been getting to write these movies. Right. I mean, I don't think, I, I don't think it's impossible to have a movie where you have so many characters. I mean, look at uh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, for example. Right. You had like four different characters coming together, and you had to like. Present them to people to to the audience and get people to know them and care for them and and they pulled it off perfectly. Then you had uh, this villain, that villain. There's about maybe there was two main villains and like mm-hmm. maybe one in particular and then right. one who decided to help at the end of, end of the day but got tricked into it. Well, and, uh, but there was multiple. And even then, I, I, I'm like, not even suggesting against the protagonist or the multiple protagonists. Yeah, like, and, and, and it even, worked. And even then, I'm not even suggesting that this be one movie. This could be two movies, easy, you know. Uh, right. Or, or three movies easy because Hollywood seems to like do trilogies. You can have <laughs> the Maximum Carnage trilogy where you know things really get out of hand, and but I guess you would have to get the the, the Fantastic Four in there and True. Sony doesn't well, own I mean, the rights so to you, that. I mean, you do so. know that there are well, so that's so it's a good thing you brought that up. Uh, there is a strong possibility that you will see some MCU characters cross over into the Sony Spider Man universe. Right. So I guess so, I would rewrite that with Avengers. Was that? I guess then I would rewrite it with Avengers. Have the Maximum Carnage storyline with okay. the Avengers built in. Well, I mean, they are working on so, a Fantastic Four movie anyway. So, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they've already decided who's going to be a part of that and whatnot. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I guess I guess a, a more realistic storyline maybe would be uh, the Superior Spider-Man. To see uh, Dr. Ock finally get his one up on right. Spider-Man. I don't know if that's something that you'd actually be able to tell in movies, in the movies. Because it's a whole process of Doc Doc <clears throat> not only uh, dying... Uh, but then switching consciousness with Peter Parker and then taking over the body and right. somehow Peter Parker is able to get in there and, and keep his consciousness around in the body. And I mean, it's a very long, convoluted story, which is actually a great read. Check out the Superior Spider-Man series. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's one, it becomes one of those things where <clears throat> are we able to pay attention that long? And then you would have to incorporate a lot of I just, elements. I just don't want to see any more origin stories. Right. And, and, I, think, um, and I think that's, you know, really cool that... Uh, they actually kept along Kevin Fahey uh, as part of the, one of the directors uh, for the for the series, so that way we can see more more consistency from the Marvel movies, which have been so far very well done. So I mean that's you know that's something to look forward to. You mean the MCU movies? Yeah, the Marvel oh. movies. That's what I said. Just making sure. Oh, okay. Like you have like no, well, I'm not... Marvel MCU, not right. Marvel yeah, like, right, right. Sony Spider Man because so, those have not been good. The the I guess the elephant in the room is that so now we have these all these different Spider Man we'd like to see. Um, it is almost one hundred percent certain that they're not going to stick with uh, Andrew Garfield. Uh, so two Thank of the options. God, sorry? I didn't think he was a bad Spider Man. I thought he was horrible. Not that Tobey Maguire was any better by Spider Man three, but right. you know, right. in the beginning it was it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Well, you know, it's like they said in the Batman movie. You know. Uh, Either you die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. No, that's I thought he was a great. I thought he was great in the first. Who, Turbo McGuire or Andrew Garfield? Both. Oh my god. Nah. nah. Well, 
Uh, maybe I just uh, super nerd out for. Who is uh, this guy? I don't know this guy. I don't even maybe know. Maybe super nerd out for Spider Man. I don't even know who you maybe. are anymore. <laughs> you know, Spider Man is, is Marvel's most popular. Uh, I don't know who you are anymore. Entity. Don't I think subject. I, I don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> I think <laughs> Andrew Garfield was just too much of a uh, pretty boy to be the the geek, gotcha. the nerd. Yeah, it's just sad. like I'm looking for 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 uh, a Peter Parker who's just like. I hate to say it, but he's he's a loser. Peter Parker so, is a loser. It's great that you brought that up. You know, he so, gets he gets picked on, he gets teased, he gets he, he he's at the bottom rung. So it seems and then like he becomes the Spider Man, and it's like he gets that power. The, right. So it seems like the two people that they're actually, I guess, vetting is the is the word uh, for the next Peter Parker is uh, Logan Lerman, and I'm probably gonna say all these names wrong. Well, maybe the next guy's a little bit better. So Lo- Logan Lerman, uh, he was the guy in Fury, the kid that ends up living at the end of the movie Fury. Okay. The one with the tanks and mm-hmm. uh, what's his face? Or Dylan O'Brien, who's the kid in Maze Runner. I mm-hmm. think Dylan O'Brien was also in, um, uh, what was the movie? Uh, not Prometheus. It's the one, Percy Jackson. There you go. Yeah, I, I still don't see Geek in them. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't see Geek. I mean, I can see it. I actually think uh, D- uh, Dylan O'Brien would be a good fit. No, you know, I, I think, and this is this is why I think they, they do totally wrong, and they might be able to... To work with it, uh, Captain America, the first, the first Avenger, that movie, that is the amazing uh, transformation of geek to superhero. But you know, that he one, starts off that movie looking like a pale, floppy. You know that was digital. I understand that effects. was digital, and that's why I just said I'm sure they could work oh, with it. Oh yeah, yeah. But they haven't done that in the Spider-Man movies. It's just like, oh look, he's 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 a teen, and now he's Spider-Man, and it's fine. And I think we need that where you go from the pale, pasty kind of right. get picked on kid. And then you become the brolic, super-looking Captain America. Well, I, we I, need I, that I for Spider-Man. That's why it's important to, again, you know, remember that they got Kevin Feige again to kind of, I, I wouldn't say necessarily oversee, but be a part of the Sony Spider-Man universe. Uh, so as they continue to develop this character and they pick their actors, etc., because I, I, if it's very possible that they're going to use the same Spider-Man in the Marvel movie. They need uh, Mick Lovin. From Superbad. Boom! McLovin from Superbad. You got want, it. I don't want him at all. Yes. From Napoleon Dynamite. Ha! <laughs> I think I'm ready to move on to the next topic. You, <laughs> you sir, are disgusting. McLovin. Piece of, oh, McLovin would be awesome. No, I don't. I just don't know. like how he looks. I'm sure no. he's not such a comic No, he, he's definitely no. not Peter He's just Parker. too much of a, of, of a loser to be Spider-Man afterwards. I guess. Um, but, I mean, even Tobey Maguire in, in the Spider-Man uh, movies... There wasn't that much of a drastic transition. Yeah, he got picked on in the beginning of the movie, you know, in school and stuff. But after he became Spider Man, he just got abs. Like, he stood the same exact size. He Listen, I'll, any, I'll let any beef 10 here. spiders bite me if I get abs. <laughs> my luck, I get abs on top of my fat, though. <laughs> Wait, what? Does that even make sense? Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing these movies. Uh, in regardless to who they pick to be Spider Man and what storyline they go to. Um, as you can tell, I liked all the movies. Yeah, again, I just don't, so, I'm just excited. three. I, I, I will agree, I didn't like three. I didn't like yeah. three or three, Amazing three Spider-Man terrible. 1 or 2. Really? Yeah, hate them both. No, I can't agree with that. Paul doesn't I, know much about it. It wasn't anything. terrible, but... I try not to know much about anything. I, I, I figured, <laughs> I'm that guy, because I, I gotta figured. remain a guy. I do too much geek, I'm not that guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that said, uh, we will move on to uh, the second topic, which is um, Constantine. So Constantine is, is, was this amazing show that kind of just popped up out of nowhere, a lot of people had no idea who he was, uh, unless they knew uh, references from the movie. I was about to say, it didn't pop up on it. Well, no well, well, yeah, so, I mean, everybody kind of, like, I don't know if everybody knew how many people knew about Hellblazer. Uh, Keanu Reeves being uh, Constantine. I'm pretty sure not many people knew about Hellblazer, unless you were a comic geek fan kind of thing. I think you're underselling the comic, be- the comic geek fan. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, for it, people who just watch TV. Were, yeah. I mean, I know Hove had no idea who Constantine was. I had no was. idea. But Hove's a guy. He's Long not story a geek. short, though, Constantine popped up. He's just hurtful words. And it was a fantastic, <laughs> amazing show. It was a really good show. Yeah, it blew Unfortunately, my Unfortunately, right now, it's it's up in the air as to whether they're going to be renewed or not. Uh, so NBC hasn't officially decla- uh, made a statement as to whether they're canceling or continuing the show, uh, at least as of the moment. I thought they were, pretty, they were pretty no, clear. No, they're, they're still like. up in the air. They haven't made any determinations. However, it is, again, looking closer that it will be uh, a canceled series. So my, my question is, should it be canceled? And how could we, or how could they, I guess not we, but how could they fix it to make sure that this, this show, which is a hit, in my opinion, stays on the air and lasts longer? Where can we put it? What, what can we do to make this work? Can I jump in? Or you, oh, if you want this one? I oh. mean, we're all going to jump in. I mean, 
Well, you want to take you it first? Rock, paper, scissors on the air so that... Uh, <laughs> you I hate it. Rochette ball. Let's go. Ready? <laughs> you two. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, scissors. Shoot. All right. Ah, uh, pistol. <laughs> pistol. <laughs> pistol. <laughs> Come out. <on>. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you can't be, be paper. Don't be pistol. Oh, you can you can crumple it and put it in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. And then you get it back. Uh, so now, uh, where I stand on this topic is, uh, I used to be a big fan of Supernatural. Right. Uh, binge watch. So you used to, so you don't like it anymore. Oh, I mean, I have. I lost a little bit of enthusiasm on it. Not right. gonna lie, I used to be extremely like fanatic about the uh, <clears throat> about the show. I found out about it on uh, one trip I took, and uh, I've watched. Where'd I've watched. Go? I went down south, and uh, there was a cool little kid uh, was was a family member of a family member who uh, got me into the show. Stop digging. And uh, <laughs> I got into the show, long story short, and I binge-watched all nine seasons from then on forward. All nine seasons that were available on Netflix, I ran out. Uh, mm. They currently have it on uh, Showbox. Oh. I wouldn't really know much about that. That's, <laughs> that's what I heard. Um, on another token, however. On another token, however. Um, I've, I've watched maybe... Maybe like six episodes of the twelve that's currently available on Showbox. Not again, not that I would know. Um, we don't judge. We don't. Yeah, thank you. This, this is judgment free zone. This is a safe place. Planet Fitness. Do you serve pizza on the first? I mean, we serve you ice cream every Monday. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good enough. But um, my problem with it is like uh, I was introduced to Constantine the TV show, and uh, it's great. It blew my mind. Like I have no need for Supernatural anymore. Okay. Uh, it changes it. It gives me a round, if not the same exact type of storyline that uh, Supernatural gives me. But it's uh, it's a little more interesting for me. It's a little more grittier and mm-hmm. dark versus uh, Supernatural's kind of like happy-go-lucky two brothers. They love each other. It's cool. One of them dies every season. Then they come back. Um, oh, my God. It's like the Range Brothers. Yeah, we're brothers. <laughs> we're, we're happy, happy and, and we go singing. to hell. Oh shit! <laughs> that's a whole different show. I didn't see that. One. Yeah, see that I missed that season. I missed that. Episode. No, that that's that's supernatural. Every time they go to hell. Yeah, pretty much. Like one of them is dying, so it's kind of repetitive. It's cool, but uh, I mean, what is it on like twelve seasons now? I mean, it's on season ten. Um, but so, there's there's like twenty three episodes per season. Oh Jesus! So it's it's like it gets pretty hectic. Yeah, like there's like one story. There's one storyline per like every two seasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I mean, can... Constantine is is pretty hectic. Um. They kind of introduced what the basic premise of the show was or for, mm-hmm. you know, what they were driving at in the beginning. And uh, if you watch it from, like, the first episode, it, it starts out a little slow, but then it grabs you. Right. And it's like from then on forward, it's dri- driving you through. And every episode drives home the point. So I think that's what makes it good and what they why they should bring it back. Because it has a purpose. Right. It's not just a show because it got ratings and because, you know, we like it or certain people like it. It has a purpose, and they're driving at a goal, and it works. Right. For the most part, you know So, what I, mean? I mean, just a little bit more to the backstory. Crazy thing that I, I found out, you know, while prepping for the show was the first episode aired at 4 million plus views. Now, I don't know what that compares <laughs> to on other TV shows, but you would think 4 million views is a hit. And then every subsequent subsequent show, 3 million. Now, I mean, nothing ever peaked over 4 million again. But three million was kind of like I think they're concerned that the popularity of the show is going to wane because of Supernatural. I mean, eventually people are going to be like, "Well, you know, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch Supernatural, and I'm already invested in Supernatural. So why am I going to stop watching that and watch this?" Right. But um, and then uh, to piggyback off of that real quick, Dave, I um not to be sexist or think that everything is about looks or whatever. Um, you may agree, you may not agree. Um, but at the same time. If you look at the premise of the show, there's a a gritty European guy who's right. fighting monsters, the demons, devil. John Constantine. John Constantine, where in the show, obviously Constantine versus Supernatural, where it's two young, handsome, Beral. young men. You know what I mean? Who are gonna appeal to a wider audience? They're gonna get the the right. teens. They're gonna get the you know, the grown men. They're gonna get the women. They're gonna get the housewives right. who might not see. The, the enjoyment in the show but like it's a pretty face it's a pretty face life. so it, oh, well, too much but um <laughs> they might go for that you know he's staring at booties watch it Dean watch it <laughs> say he's looking at your butt um but you know what I mean it appears to a wider audience just because you know there's a uh, quote unquote attractive people on right. the show so I think that's more of the unfortunate you know the, you know the crazy thing is that the, 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 the actor they picked was such a hit 
to be Constantine. Because he they, looked it, like... Oh, him. yeah, no, of course. And I, and I know, obviously, there's makeup that goes with that, but they did such a fantastic job. And especially if you think, like, you look at, like, Keanu Reeves playing Constantine. That was it terrible. was just Keanu Reeves in a suit and a tie playing this, you know, this character. It was Keanu Reeves being Keanu Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> Keanu Reeves is pretty badass. No, he's not. He's pretty mm. badass. No, he's not. I mean, that one movie that was really good. Keanu Reeves is a that. bit of... Which one? The one that I just told you to read? Oh, John, John Wick? John, John Wick? Wick? Badass. No, yeah. But he's, I mean, he's not really badass in my I know Kung Fu. Matrix, badass. Not really. After maybe like, you know, the first one, it got a little repetitive, but he was badass in the beginning. The way he flew away at the end, okay, look, well, we're not, we're not the tangent oh, we're not going to Matrix. We're, we're not the tangent show. Okay, we're going to stay okay. on topic. All right, I'm sorry. All I'm saying is. But you respect yeah, Keanu Reeves. You I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm I, would, not I respect Chuck Norris before I respect Keanu Reeves. Oh, no respect for Chuck Norris. I got no respect You know, for behind Chuck his beard is another fist. <laughs> Stupid. I knew that was coming. Yeah, I mean, have you seen it? Have you seen it? Of course. Have you seen it? Have Everybody you ever punched him in the face and it punched you back? <laughs> no, but, no, but he grabs my hand before I can punch him in the but face. But seriously, okay, I, uh, I, I think Constantine is really where it's at. I think the best way to save the show is to take it away from NBC. I don't just think. Put it on a different network. I, I just think NBC was the wrong place for it. It's like NBC just doing what right now. Um, I mean, they actually did a pretty good job. Oh for yeah, me. aren't just, they doing the uh, what's that show you like with the princesses and such? Oh no, it's, uh, never mind. It's ABC. Uh, that's, uh, My bad. That might even be CW. No, it's ABC. No, it's BCW. That's not even a channel. CW. No, it's NBC. Oh, no. It's, a- it's NBC. But, okay. like... The I'm pro- not sure I watch it on the internet. The, 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 problem, the problem that I have with it, Oops. though, is, is that no one's watching that, that... No one's expecting a show like Constantine to be on NBC is the, is right. the point. You know, and then you do have uh, Supernatural, which is what is going up against. And, and that's kind of a slap in the face to Constantine because Constantine was around first with Hellblazer. And the story is way grittier and way more interesting. Right, but that that is a, a graphic novel and comics that people aren't necessarily exposed to. Right, but no, but no. the point that I'm making is is that you can take that graphic comic and you can take take what people aren't exposed to and and give it to them. I mean, like like Hope said, we got Supernatural and Supernatural is a great show. Don't get me wrong, I watched a lot of episodes and I watched nearly as many seasons as Hope has. But it gets it gets really campy and tired after a while. You yeah. know, they keep hunting monsters and dying and going to hell or heaven and getting brought back, only for the other one to end up in hell. And then, it, like you can pretty, it's pretty form formulaic. You can write down exactly what the next season's going to be about if you watch the past the past couple of seasons. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have something a little bit more fresh in Constantine. And I think if they took it away from NBC, it doesn't be have to be episodic. It doesn't have to be. Well, you know, we're hunting this demon this, this week, and next week we're hunting that demon, and next week we're hunting that demon, and they can tell like a more expansive story like they did in Hellblazer where it's like, you know, Constantine's damned because of his brother and blah, blah, blah. And there's a whole very deep story that they can get into if they're not trying to make it episodic right, for it, NBC. But, okay, my whole thing, though, it is on TV and he does need to fight or or chase after or get to no, it, but, but, a, a common enemy. And, that, you know, that's part of what happened with, with The Walking Dead. No, the I understand. That was so long and drawn out that it just lost it, its value. I, I understand that, but what I'm saying is that we can move it over to sci-fi where it doesn't have to... Every episode doesn't have to be so episodic. I, I agree with Dave. Um, oh, I was making an argument. Oh, no, I can't. I, I actually agree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, viewers, to you know, listeners. Um, you sorry to agree with me? If, you, if yeah, you're viewing I, us, get away from my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, my, my issue is I agree at the fact that they need to take it away from NBC for in order for this show to live and thrive. Um, because if you just look at the catalog that's on NBC or ABC or... Uh, Prime time the CW, primetime for. TV. It just doesn't fit, for. right? It doesn't fit. Like, everything on there, even if some shows are, are, are quoted as being dark themed shows, they're all about pretty and presentation and about how everyone can watch them. Constantine is not for everyone. Yeah, I, I wouldn't right. mind if they moved it to cable and made it a little grittier. I mean... Put it on FX. You don't have to put titties in it. But... I mean, I'm not... Uh, I know you were going to say that. Whoa, whoa, Yeah, I knew whoa, you were going to say that. Whoa, how, whoa. how do we jump to titty? Did we just... How do we get to titty? Because and how dare you be like no blasphemous? Because because and say remove the titty. <laughs> there is no titty in to begin with, so I won't say. But this. if titty was on the table, you just no. remove titty. What, what, what I'm saying is, is that people feel that adding adding titty, titty adding sex scenes and adding nudity makes. Oh, I, we say sex. Hold on, titty. That, that 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 adding nudity uh, makes it more gritty, and I don't think that makes it more hmm. gritty. I just think that's kind of like you know. Right. I mean, it's a show to... without titty at the moment is pretty gritty. Really but that's the, that's the, the point show? I'm making. Like, is, is that you put titty or not? Yes. Hashtag titty. No, well, that's like HBO. It's like, oh, it's like you could have... Imagine if Game of Thrones came out for AMC. Right. Right? It would be... It, it would still be an interesting show, but it would have no titty. 
But the minute, but it's, but it seems, but Wait, it seems. But Game of Thrones without Teddy, can you imagine a world? Yeah. Like nah, it would still be a great show. But it seems, but but that's just yeah. it. It seems like the minute you put it on no HBO, titty? because you can still show show the show sex and like like allude to it. So you have, sex but you don't and have no to. Titty? But you don't. But you don't have to Titty's show. Sex. Sex. But you don't have to show anything. It's like once they put oh, movies, focus. once they put I'm shows sorry. on HBO. I heard Teddy and I lost it. Once they put shows on HBO, it's like yo, if you don't add Teddy to it. We're not showing it on our network at all. I mean, to be fair, that is almost very true. And that doesn't make that doesn't make a show gritty. Wait, did Sopranos have titty? Yes. Yeah. That for no be. reason. For no reason. Big and bada bing. Is that what it was? And it had big pussy too. Oh, yeah. Wait, big pussy. Uh, <laughs> big pussy. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> they did show a lot of big pussy. <coughs> big pussy was all over that show. But I guess that was a. Cat. But the point is, is that <laughs> like I don't, I don't think, I don't think we need to move it to make it that type of gritty. I think you can keep the gritty, the gritty feeling. Give it a less episodic uh, storyline where it doesn't feel like it's the monster week type of type of story, and you felt that though from from the first I, a little bit sometimes, but, and, like, and, like and, and, and and not too much because it's only twelve episodes, so you don't really get 13. a feel for thirteen episodes, so you don't really start to feel like it's winding you down. But I imagine that over like you know four seasons and thirty six or forty eight episodes, it might start to feel like yo. All he's all he's doing is hunting down the next demon and the next demon. See, like I'm trying to look at the big picture. See, but I I, I got that from it. There was definitely now that I look back at it, like you know, mm-hmm. a monster of the week type of thing. But at the same time, they still I felt like they did a good job in giving you something new because they had to give you a new monster. It couldn't be the same same right. demon every week. But it was the right mixture of a monster of the week with driving a home the basis of that that story. Especially like they brought it all home. Uh, and open the door wide open for uh, season two uh, but, yeah. with spoilers with uh, Manny the angel right and the fuckery he dropped at that right that's, I think I think the beauty of the true. show is is that a lot of they they oh. pose a lot of questions in the beginning that no one had the answers to and that they slowly answer those questions throughout uh, the the following episodes like why why does Chaz have so many how how can Chaz die and come back to life that was awesome you know oh, that and, then, and, then, mom, and then and then and then, awesome and then you have the episode where that gets explained you know and um why why we still don't know who, who's who exactly is after Zed sure it's her dad but who the hell is her dad and what's going I don't on know with who that who the hell gave her a power you know but but that's the point is that that they pose a lot of these questions and they and and that's the beauty of the show is that they answer these questions as the show continues plus they toss in a few things from the yeah. actual comic books if you if you're like an astute fan. And, and Comic Geek, you could see, like, uh, what's it, uh, Dr. Fate's helmet. You could yeah. see a lot of, uh, allusions back to the comic books. And that's, and that's a cool little thing that they By toss the way, in. When there. I saw Dr. Fate's helmet, that shit blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's another Fate. We gonna see him? We gonna see him. I saw, you know, dancing. Yeah, you don't see him. You don't see him. At least not. I mean, I, I kind of knew you wouldn't see him. Dr. Fate's just too much of a badass for him to be in. A TV show? Yeah. But, uh, the fact that it, Dr. Fate can be this... It's a... Oh, man. We can go down this whole rabbit hole. But we're not. Um, we are going to... I am going to close out this topic, though, by saying that NBC is... From what I've been reading, there are people who are trying to fight to get the show to come back and stay on and be another season. Um, I kind of agree with you guys, definitely, that maybe NBC wasn't the network for this uh, show. I do have strong fears of losing this show into the wilderness. Um, it's going to be another Firefly. I have, Damn. Yeah, right? Firefly? I would be <laughs> extremely upset. I'm Being a letter writer, ladies I'm and gentlemen. I'm also concerned that it goes on to sci-fi because, you know, sci-fi, ch- sci-fi shows don't always do the best once they get there. Oh, look at Some, Defiance. Oh, well, Defiance was just... So Defiance was a failure from, from the get-go. Um, oh, they made that. I think FX is a great network. Let's put it on saying. AMC. FX. AMC is another great network. I'm, I'm just saying, I hope we don't lose this show to the winds. I, I definitely really enjoyed it. And um, hopefully, uh, for, for our listeners, you have watched will watch and enjoy this uh, this great show. Uh, however, it is time for our Mitchell Toast. And uh, as we move into the Mitchell Toast, we're going to add a little bit to this um, in in uh, memory of Leonard Nimoy, who passed February 27th, um, 2015. He was the ripe old age of 83. Everybody knew him for his uh, most famous role as uh, Mr. Spock. Who Chief he, Science Officer at the right. USS Enterprise. <laughs> Boom. That's uh, Chief Science uh, Officer to you, sir. <laughs> Stupid science, bitch. <laughs> but um, so yeah, so just to take a quick second for a moment, silence for Mr. Spock, and then a toast to him, sir. Uh, we, we also want to toast to Defiant Brewery for renaming one of their already already beers, uh, the Leonard Nimroy Nimroy, excuse me, Leonard Nimroy. So cheers. That's Defiant Brewery in uh, Nanoet. 
It's actually uh, Pearl River. Pearl, Pearl River. I appreciate New York. the effort. I'm gonna try. But a, a toast to those guys at Defy Brewery. And a moment of for, silence for respecting uh, Leonard Nimoy. And again, just another second to remember him as he was, Mr. Spock. So as we continue to move on with the show, Dave, bring us topic number three. All right. Um, well, us uh, Star Wars nerds are finally getting a new, a new episode. We're getting episode seven coming out. I, can't, I don't know. I don't know when when that's going to happen, but we do know who is directing it, and we got J.J. Abrams on that one. Um, here's the question: We get the Force Awakens. J.J. Abrams is on it. Are we happy with J.J.? Or do we think somebody else is better suited to, to, to get the job done? So, I mean, J.J. Abrams also did the Star Trek movies. Right. Um, just so you have a little backstory on who J.J. Abrams is. He did Star Trek movies, the reboot of Star Trek movies, and I think he did a fantastic job. But I kind of would like to see uh, Barry Sonnenfeld. I, mean, I don't know if I'm saying that 100%, but Barry Sonnenfeld, who is actually the guy who did the first... Uh, he actually did the Better Black movies, period. And... Uh, I love those movies. What? Mind? What? Yeah. They're they're funny. They have aliens. All the aliens are kind of cool. I mean, the whole the whole. But that like, style of movie is so completely like nah, nowhere near being like Star Wars. Of course it could. I can't even talk to you right now. Yeah, I, I can't even get with that. Uh, one. No, I mean, look, we're so, going to shut them for the rest of the episode. Hope who? What you got? I got James. <laughs> Gunn. Oh, now nah, he's pound. Go ahead, Jay. Why? Was no, I don't even know why anymore. James Gunn sucks anyway. <laughs> oh, James Gunn is spectacular. For those of you who don't know. Uh, he made uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. He made a couple other movies you might know, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Slither. And uh, for the little childrens, or for the people who have children, he made that first Scooby-Doo movie we all love. Oh, nice. I actually oh, yeah. did like that movie. It was actually pretty good. The, the second they, one wasn't so good. The guy they picked for uh, Shaggy was so spot on. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could tell that before the movie he smoked Halloween. Oh, so it just fit yeah. in. <laughs> for those who don't know... Hello, Reed. Halloween. Scooby and Shaggy smoke weed. Yo, you know what my favorite part Childhood of that, that first movie though shattered. is when they kind of like hinted at them smoking Halloween. When you see the the mystery Dude, van, Scooby's next. you see the mystery machine though. You see the mystery machine, and there's just hella smoke coming out of the mystery machine. And you're like, oh, and Scooby and Shaggy getting high. And then you look, and they're just cooking mad food and shit. It's like, yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> that's move. That's for the adults. No, but go ahead, Jay. Why? 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 No, you man. Your I just, uh, I just, I just like the Men in Black movies. And you think that's a good fit though for like Star Wars? I mean, it could be. You never know. I mean. I, I don't know, uh, I didn't really have much time to do any more additional re- research into what uh, Barry did and what, what his, um, what is it called again? It's, um, like his movie history? Cinematography? Cinematography, thank you. I didn't really have a whole lot of opportunity to really, like, look into his cinematography and what he really did, because <laughs> I, I, once I realized that he did the Men in Black movies, I was like, that's, I'm, that's, I'm that's good enough for you. you know, it, it, there was enough comedy, there was enough seriousness, you know, it covered a lot. I'm not saying they were all winners. You know, the third one was a little bit odd. You know, it kind of missed some points. And, I don't know. The Worms. Hey, you got... Never mind. <laughs> the Worms are pretty wavy. I think that's kind of the best part of Men in Black. I mean, I mean they, he also had, uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of aliens that were in the movie that they did a great job, you know, well, designing the aliens. Well, have, you, bad, so. have you seen that J.J. Uh, J. Abrams is actually going back to uh, some of uh, Lucas' use, old use. stuff? No, not, oh, not Lucas' oh, yeah. his own he's stuff, but he's puppets. going back to yeah. puppets and actual stages and not green, just green I mean, screens. Oh, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying J.J. Uh, Abrams isn't a solid fit for this. In fact, I give him super props because... So apparently, like, directors are taking to Twitter as, like, their means of leaking stuff, but not necessarily leaking much. And so, you, like, it was really cool when you got to see that one puppet who had, like... He looked like a, a little worm snake kind of guy. And he had, like, the little things that were hanging off of him. He looked like a merchant. And he was kind of, like, traveling around. You see him stop and look. But it's, like, him interacting with J.J. Abrams in the real world as if he was in Star Wars. And- no, I'm not sure I saw that one. But I did yeah. see, like, the scenery. And uh, he's, he's standing next to one of the cruisers. And uh, Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's pretty cool that they're not just using uh, green screen. That they're actually building the sets. They're building the props. They're using uh, the puppets. I like to see that he's going back to that. I originally, when, I, when we first posed this question and we were thinking about it, I originally wanted to say James Cameron because he did Aliens, he did a lot of epic, he did like Titanic, and he, he's done a lot of epic Avatar. movies, Wait, Avatar, yeah. <clears throat> and I think I think uh, what we expect from Star Wars is very much an epic feel. We want something that's like, we want like high fantasy, we want right. like the, the sci-fi version of Lord of the Rings, we want something that, that's big and, and really just... Is large scale. It goes everywhere, all over this, but do you this, think this that's universe not really that they created. For it, though, with, with his uh, <clears throat> his lens flares and his well, shaky cam. Well, well no, and... but, but but hear me out. So if, originally I was going to say James Cameron, 
And then I was like, maybe Christopher Nolan because he can make it more gritty and, and realistic. Because well, we see what he you did like for the Batman. Grit. I do. I do like the grit. I like it's a dirty, dirty. I like when you take these things. No, because I like when you take these things and you make them a little bit more realistic. Because then they're relatable, you know. Right. Um, but then I, I thought that maybe he'd make it a little too gritty. He'd make it, you know, sips a little too, too fierce, and and not 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 the villain that 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 is going that that, that they are that gets defeated. So, so ladies, I'm thinking, he's not that dirty. <laughs> I, I think I think Abrams is is uh, the perfect guy for the job right. because he does do the lens flare, he does do the shaky the shaky cam, and I do and I know a lot of people ridicule him or, or judge him for that, but I think the shaky cam and the lens flare puts you as a viewer there in the action, right. as if you were viewing it firsthand. So I, I've never had that. that and I love that Star Wars though. In this Star Wars, I never felt like I was there. I yeah, was but, like I was watching this epic but, but, story. But that's, but, that, but that's just that's what's so great about it is that with this new iteration, we're not getting uh, the 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 huge epic anymore. It's still going to be epic. It's still going to be far reaching. But now you're starting to get a little bit a, a feeling of you being a little bit more uh, in the cut, if you will. You're actually viewing what's going on, not out from outside. The, the Millennium Falcon, but from like very up close to the Millennium Falcon, so you can feel the war of the engine so much that the screen is shaking and everything's going on. You know um, that that scene I remember every time from Store Store Track, where they jump out the the the, the oh yeah that was awesome the, what you call it they're trying the to stop the, the drill from drilling into the planet and, and you can see them fall this long descent from yeah. the atmosphere, and you can see the lens flare and and like the, the camera's just a little shaky. It gave you the feeling that you were like. You know, like IMAX, you were there with them jumping down and seeing everything going on. So, Hope, I mean, why, <clears throat> why exactly James Gunn? I mean, because if you like grit, James Gunn is I was the family like, <clears throat> uh what, what was the Dawn of the Dead? Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, so you I mean, mean that was that, that. Well, it's more gritty than a zombie movie. No, it's gritty, but it, it, it's still kind of campy. You know, like like his movies can kind of have like this. Yeah, it's gritty, but it's kind of almost like happy go lucky by the end of it. Even even uh, going into the Dawn galaxy. Dead, I mean, they, Dawn of the Galaxy. During <clears throat> well, the, 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 the movie, there was. Pretty much, you know, happy go lucky thing. Uh, there were jokes here and there. It was still a Marvel movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, even Don, even Don of the Dead. But it's like it was like there was people fucking dying do you, here and there. Do you not remember like that whole? You know what I mean? Like, that whole montage in Don of the Dead, the where you where you, where they're like in there doing like the normal home. human things, and they're just like, yeah, we're having fun, and we're doing out here, and I'm screwing this chick, and we're recording, and it's fun. Like he he kind of has like this little, and I'm not I'm not judging him. I, I love that movie. I love. I love Dawn of the Dead. I love uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy. I love what he does. I just don't think that fits in right. with uh, Star Wars. And originally, I didn't think Abrams did either. But I, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, maybe we can go a different direction. I mean, to counter that argument, Ewoks. Done. Ewoks what? That was Ewoks are terrible! Uh, okay. That was Lucas! And they, but they added... Ewoks was, in, w- w- was a part of it, and that was silly, and it was kind of funny, and it was a little bit campy, and you also have Jar Jar Binks... Super campy. I hate George oh, Orbeans. Campy. But it was there. And you can't, and as much as you want to block him from your memory, you can't. I sure you can. See it, you can't unseen it. I sure it. can. No, nope, he said George Orbeans, you immediately knew who he was talking about. Oh, yeah, you've seen it. You <laughs> can't know. block him. I'm aware of the character. It. I'm not remembering any scene he was in. Shut up. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't entirely agree with Hope. I mean, disagree with Hope. I think um, it would actually, he would actually be a possibly strong fit for that. Because uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was. Definitely a huge fun. surprise. You got to laugh. You got attached yeah. to right, I'm not every knocking it. single character yep. that was in that, and then, whether it be villain or or protagonist. Well, I don't know about villain, but no, like, but you felt them. You right. felt their presence. Well, you felt like you know what? I might want to kick this guy's. But, ass. but here's the thing: I'm not totally not knocking it. But after I saw what the storyline is supposed to be for uh, the Force Awakens, it's um, all right. Well, this is a storyline. Spoilers? Uh, spoilers? Not, maybe, not, maybe? Well, or maybe spoilers. Preemptive spoilers. Well, this, well, not the storyline, but the the the, con, the plot concept. Right. Is that um, the Emperor and Vader weren't working by themselves. They had like a whole right. army of Siths that they had uh, trained and had set up. And Vader himself had these Sith Inquisitors. And this isn't so much spoilers because there's a show Rebels out. Yep. Star and you can Wars see Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. Rebels. You can see this whole story unfold in Star Wars Rebels, which is canon and guess for where, the movie that's coming guess where out. you can find it? Showbox. <laughs> I was gonna say the Disney, the Disney Channel, but yeah, Showbox, I guess. But yeah, we don't support Disney. Disney Family <laughs> is it right. The, the Disney Family, I guess so. So the 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 movie's supposed to be these Inquisitors hunting down uh, any remaining Jedi and them kind of doing their own thing and how the the, the Empire hasn't collapsed. Is Disney FX or something? They, I know Disney, Disney XD, XD, XD. XD. 
So Sorry. yeah, so so the story is about how the Empire just automatically didn't collapse right. after because the death the of Vader and the Empire and because the Inquisitors took over and they're still out there doing their own and thing. And so did the Inquisitors come up with that super awesome idea to have a lightsaber with uh I think that was an Inquisitor. Sh- over his hands. I think that might have actually been an Inquisitor in the in the in the cutscene. But um I mean, that'd be kind of cool. I so I think I think bringing a gritty feel to that is going to be great. I'm just psyched to fucking see the movie. <laughs> but what like, so did you I mean like I would, I I wouldn't really say that I would rather go with a different director. Right. Um, you open. don't care. You just I'm, want someone to do it and get it done. And, no, so not you can necessarily. See it. I mean, I'm open to it. <laughs> um, if they would have said James Gunn, knowing his you know cinematography and what he's made, mm-hmm. I'd be like, shit, yeah, let's go watch Teach it. Teach him cinematography. Now he wants to use it. Dude, I told you cinematography. You didn't know what the word was. I threw it out there. I, threw your yes, I knew word. what it was. I just know so how to so say let it. me ask you this further question, and I'm sorry to cut you off. No, he's so, not. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. I, I'm mild- I've been agreeing with him all so show, no, so then don't cut him off. I, I'm mildly sorry, but I'm not sorry enough to not cut you off. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's fair. But, um, so Abrams is doing episode seven, right? Mm-hmm. But for, for episode eight, they got some other guy lined up. Uh, um, Ryan Johnson, I think his name is. He's done almost nothing. The most, the, the, the most noticeable things he's done is three episodes for Breaking Bad and the movie Looper. Now he's done one or two other things, like but nothing that's gained any real notice. I mean, Looper wasn't a bad movie. And Looper wasn't a bad movie. Freaking bad, it's but it's a good series. Dude, that if, the episode if they have to make a movie, right? But to give to the to, point but, that they have to make several websites for you to figure out what the fuck was happening wait, in the movie. What, Looper. Looper. Uh, there were several websites for I you to find that. out what was happening. I didn't do all that, dude. We would discuss it at, at at our previous job together. Where there was a timeline of where everything fit in, and it still made absolutely no fucking sense. Do you really want a guy making a, a, yeah, I, a movie? Yeah, it's, you... it's not even that. I think to give this relative unknown a, a big title like Star Wars Episode Eight, that's it's, it's just bonkers. It blows I think my the mind. pressure. Might like, listen, sir, you ain't put the work in on this. I think the pre- the pressure of having to do such a good job at this movie would get him to be right on point. Or it could know. make him fail. Go either way. Yeah. He well, could buckle under the pressure. Well, you know what? To be fair, how much more could he fuck up? George Lucas ruined his own his own thing, right? Everybody hated one, two, or three. Not That's me. Not everybody. I did. But I mean, I loved them, but a lot of people hated them. I like moments in the movies. I didn't like the movies as a whole. Yeah, I mean, see, that's the thing. I just sit down and enjoy a movie. I don't look too much into it. So that's why I like when I watch Cinema Sins or, or things like that. That's, where kind, it's like, that's kind of why you go back and watch a movie a second time. Though. Right. Yeah. You watch the first, first time to enjoy it, and then you go back... And like, let's see what I can pick up. <laughs> let's see what I don't like about this right. movie. I mean, you don't actively be like, nice I'm, job, let's, Hove. Dave and Jay, let's sit down and watch this movie so I can see what I hate about it. Right. But you know what I mean? It, it kind of that's kind of how it happens. True. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's, uh, so okay. that's the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I think JJ Abrams is gonna do a fantastic job. Uh, as far as the the other guy coming in to do the last two, to why wouldn't why wouldn't they just give him like three? Maybe he's too expensive. Just like here. I mean, they could have like, given him a shot in the dark. Three. Hey, listen, if you, you kick this one out the park, we'll give you a shot in the second one. If you could reproduce and make it second, fuck it, you do the third one. Right. I mean, the other thing you gotta understand is that nothing is really nailed down in the movie industry. It's, it's just so, so odd. Let's because it's like, from Looper to loop his not, ass back to the past <laughs> and not do the second one. Anyway. Um, I, just, I just think it's really odd to give a relative unknown a big title. And bring him in the second part, second act of it. Or are they going to knock I mean, him out so and bring somybody in for the third everybody's one? Everybody's unknown to some extent. But what I'm saying and is... And not until you get an opportunity to do something big that you become known. Right, but what I'm saying is, are we going to see you, somebody new every time they do another episode? So now episode 9 is going to be some other dude? Well, while, while I know this won't happen... Spoilers, I'm directing episode 9. I oh, appreciate it. There you I, go. I would like a role as Jabba the Hutt. No. <laughs> you have to audition just like everybody else. Oh, wow. That's double fucked up. You didn't audition for the show? I did. I've known you for a while. That's my audition. Oh, <laughs> then I shouldn't have put you in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up, not me. I That's why I'm the director for episode nine. You right. Guys. But um, honestly, I, I hope there aren't any more Star Wars movies after nine. I know that's not going to be the case. Oh, hell no. They're going to milk that to the... Of course not. But you know, They're going to ride it to the reels for all. I, actually, I think by the time nine comes out, I might be on my way out anyway. Because <laughs> it takes a long time for them to put these movies together. Not that long. They're come. They're putting. They're already working on seven. I mean, seven's in production. Two years. Tops. By the time nine comes out, my son will be in high school. Probably. We should look back on this. You know what's going to be a shame when you talk when you talk about Star Wars. He's going to be thinking seven, eight, and nine. Not 
four, five, and six. I'm gonna make him sit or down. Actually, and when your son thinks about Star Wars, he might he might think as early as one, two, three. Oh, that's terrible. Actually, as late because I'm. I mean, we're just old. That's true. The worst part is that there's some old person that might be listening to the show. Like you bastards, <laughs> you dumb bastards, <laughs> you dumb bastards. Um, but anyway, so. But listen, in, I went to school with George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> so in other uh, movie news. We did finally get our first taste of uh, Aquaman in his full out get up. He's Puerto Rican. He's from the Bronx. <laughs> Jason Momoa, who's obviously Hawaiian, is our Aquaman. Might as well be Puerto And so Rican. he's got this very tribal kind Puerto Rican of look. not Puerto Rican look. Hawaiian, but never served because I'm Puerto Rican and I swam here, maybe. <laughs> I- I don't even know where to go with this because it, we're not trying to start a race war. Let's just like hold take it because he's like, yo, no, he looks Puerto war, Rican. This is like absolutely ridiculous. Okay. So like, how would the Puerto Rican do in the movie? How would the Puerto Rican do? He got knives in his mouth and his butt crack and in every pocket he has. I didn't see that in the picture, bro. Yo, take it from home. And not the picture, he's first Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh, no, I'm half Dominican. I got a machete in my left pant leg. But what's the other half? I don't know. Aquaman. The other half is Aquaman. Yeah, half, <laughs> that's what happens when you're Puerto Rican. You're half Aquaman. Okay, you're Puerto off Rican. The off the back, it's just, there's Aquaman in there somewhere. But see, this is this is my problem. I feel like they could have went with somebody else. Let's look at oh, every man. iteration of Aquaman. He's blonde, white. Are you being like a racist? I'm not being racist. I'm white. White. Well, like, that's a little bit racist. I, I mean, I he think just is. Like, he has a certain look and appeal. You know what I mean? Aside from the all black hair and being Hawaiian, I think he has he has look. He's Puerto Rican. <laughs> he's, he's Hawaiian, so, bro. He, I live in the Bronx. <laughs> I, li- I live in the Bronx. He lives up the block. <laughs> he's Listen, he he's, hangs out with Ray Ray and them he's, that be in front of the store. Jenny from the block? Oh, Jenny from the block. That's his cousin. I got you. But... I mean, I don't know. I just feel I like hope, there was... I hope you run to Jason Momoa in the streets. Because that dude will pop your head off. Oh, if we go to Comic Con or something, like, he's going to squeeze my head and it's going to explode. I'm not saying that he's not strong and that he should he doesn't deserve, you right. know... Uh, you talking shit about Kyle Drogo, bro. True story. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 I love him in, in, in Game of Thrones. why he got a braid. You know he never fell in battle. That's true. I love him in Games of Thrones and... Um, but, but but my issue is it's just he's just not a good fit for the part. At least in my opinion. No, I agree. Not that he shouldn't work. Not that he doesn't have bills. Not that he has you know stuff that he has to take care of. If he's got bills after well, Game of Thrones, no, no. But well, you here's the thing. I don't, I don't know. I can't say he's just, not a good fit for the part. Here's here's, here's he's, my he's thing if I can because he's done Conan and he's he's definitely got like the brolic. Uh, you looking at his muscles, Dave? Down apparently. Oh. What you looking at his muscles, Dave? Yeah. Oh. No. Uh, no, like he's definitely got like that, like like I'm I'm cut, I'm built, I can play these like superhero. Uh, he's got the he's got he's the look. Hercules. But but here's but here's my here's my problem. Rock ex- exit stage left. Here's, exit. <laughs> enter. I, I, enter. I, I, excuse I me. Here's 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 the one issue that I have, and and I know a lot of people be like, well, that doesn't matter. Is that we have this expectation of what the comic, uh, the these heroes should look like because we've we've read the comics and we right. view the comics. And then when you get somebody that's just so completely off, exactly, it kind of it kind of throws you off. Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin, worst ever, worst ever. He's dead. Don't talk about the dead. I just he's not a bad person. He that role. Just, don't ever play Kingpin. Just don't ever play well, Kingpin again. I got that covered. Well, we can scratch that one off the list. <laughs> <laughs> he was great in the Green Mile, but right. Kingpin. I, I don't know. I, I just there's like an expectation that's there, and then you have you have these people come in and they're not they they're not cast for the look, and it, it kind of I don't know it throws a fan like me off. Mm-hmm. And and it's, yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter because you you watch the movie and you're like, wow, even though he didn't have a look, he still did a really good job. Yeah, but that's yeah. not always the case. As a matter of fact, that's rarely the case. I mean, I, okay, wait. If you want to look back on on Jason Momoa's history, though, and while it may not be a terribly long one. I think he did an amazing job as Khal Drogo. So right, yeah, be, he killed it. Coming to be Aquaman, I mean, I have virtually no expectations for the, for this movie anyway, um, because here's, here's what I want to know. Though. wasn't all that. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't all that. Here's what I want to know. I actually like that. If you live in under the ocean because you're Atlantean, all right. Yep. How you got a tan? Mm. Oh, no. Nah, How get, you brown? You get more of a tan when you're in the water. But you live deep under you're the water. Deep when, underwater. You don't live. You don't live like not close right to under the water. sun. Is not. I mean, he there. comes up for air once in a while. You, you no, you don't. He rides with dolphins. Don't he ride with dolphins? I'm done. Don't he ride with dolphins? <laughs> he don't ride with dolphins. 
You need to read a comic, boy. You, you, Dolphin's a rapist. He found out and he stopped telling him. <laughs> but Atlanteans, <laughs> but, but Atlanteans are, are, are like deep in the ocean. I mean, I, how you, how you any other color than pasty? Is what I want to know. I mean, you don't know what kind of technology they got. Look at Actually, Ariel. Okay, look wait. at Ariel from the Little Mermaid. Boom! She's a ginger. That's a white she ginger. <laughs> so here's my whole thing, though. So nailed it. Especially in the comics, the Atlanteans are actually a advanced, advanced technological race as well. So they, they invented tanning beds a long time ago. Boom! That's tanning why beds. Not? That's it. Why not? What's the need? This... Oh so they God. can keep their lovely so, tan on the ocean. You don't feel like yo, damn! It's all winter. I feel a little pacey. And let me go get a tan. No. Nah. Under Man, the I, sea. I, I don't got tan. Under, under the sea, thing. everything is better. Even tans. See? Yes. <laughs> See? I guess. In so, case. okay, wait. So, we done we done did all this, and this is the part of the conversation where I, I'm going to flip the freaking table over. Wait, one second. One second. Just one. Hold that thought. What's this chick's name? Uh, Michelle Rodriguez? Yeah. The one who was on... Uh, Better Aquaman. She said some real asshole She shit made some weird ass comment about how, like... Why, why are you taking all the white people's heroes? Why are you taking all the white people's heroes? Hashtag, he's Puerto Rican. She is Puerto Rican. No, but he's Puerto Rican. That's why she's not a hero, though. Exactly. She's saying that, like, wait, like, are, oh, I think people were offended. Are you offended by that comment? No, I don't give a fuck either. Yeah, no, I didn't. I don't care. I'm I, just I, saying I, it's funny. Like, no fucks. Because what happens is, if they're only giving, and in cases where people like that, they just want to bitch about something. Uh, also, side note, Michelle Rodriguez, if you ever listen to it, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, side note, uh, Hov's wife, if you also listen to this. I love you too, baby. Whoop his ass. <laughs> yeah, but um, aside from that, like, like people, <laughs> people who complain about like uh, situations where like, oh, why are you taking all the white man's role? If as a ethnic actor, sports writer, I, I'm not. If regardless right. of what field you're in, if um, <laughs> anything that you go into, if you want to complain about like people taking, you know, quote unquote white positions or, or ethnic positions or whatever the case may be, then in turn, if there if you as an ethnic actor, sports writer, athlete, whatever the case is, if you're not getting those same jobs, then you still complain. So regardless of the fact, you're going to have something to complain about. So shut the fuck up. You've made a lot of money. Sit in the corner and relax. Yeah, but she's saying that you colored people. <laughs> Her as a colored person. No, but, but she's, then, saying, she's saying that, that, that people who, who don't fit the role, the look of the role, or taking the roles from white people. Like, because you have a lot of white heroes like Aquaman and them. And you have Jason, you know, who what we're all agreeing is that he doesn't fit the look of the role. But then what I'm saying is... I, I, I Charlie Day. That's See, what I'm but, <laughs> You're stupid. If, if, if it was the other way around where they weren't, you know, giving people equal opportunities to play a role and giving them a chance to take a role and do something different, then would she still complain? Wait, are we really delving down this? I mean, who brought he, it up? He wasn't a terrible fit for Aquaman, but I just I'm, I not, say, I'm not picking up what you're putting down with Aquaman. Jason Momoa being Aquaman, but it, you know you brought up Michelle Rodriguez. He did. No, I did. Oh no, here's here's my thing though. Okay, we're gonna get out of this 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 uh, color hole where we're, we're talking about the color people skin Stay and what the role they, hole. and what role they should be playing. Like we can, we'll, we'll we'll jump out of it. Here's my thing about about Jason Momoa is that. He's said he's he's gotten half the half the half the movies he's in he's got hardly any words. I just can't see him being the well spoken Aquaman. You know, well, Aquaman is Puerto Rican. To... We can't be well spoken. He's not Puerto Rican. He's Hawaiian. Close Jesus. Enough. Very similar. <laughs> he's not Asian, has... but he might be Spanish. If we, if we don't have Hawaiian listeners, we definitely don't have him now. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I just don't see him. I, I don't know. I just I just can't see him in the role. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe I he's great. I just can't see him. I don't know. I just I think it's unfair. To discount it because simply off the fact that you know he's Puerto Rican. He, he's no, he, I, I'm, I'm gonna be Christ. serious for a second. He, he's Hawaiian, you know what I mean? Like not just to say that he's going to do a bad job because he's Hawaiian. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with anything that. It's just merely the look. Like when you when you go to see a superhero movie, you want for the most part somebody who embodies embodies that character. Right. So Here's when when he doesn't look like him in any way, shape, or form, aside for the fact that he's I mean, but that's been, but here's my question. Hold on, hold on. If they would have made Charlie Hunnam, Peter Quill, right, Star Lord, a black guy, you didn't know nothing about Guardians of the Galaxies. You never read the comics. You just went to see this movie and you saw, hey, he's naturally a white guy. But, but if he was a black guy and you didn't know anything <sighs> about it, would it have mattered? No. But that's but that's the point hold of this on. argument is that it wouldn't matter if if, the, if he looked like he fit the role. 
If they got yeah, I wouldn't care if he was black, right. but if he fit in with... But you wouldn't know what the role was because he had no background on who, Guardian, or, or who no, Star-Lord but... was. What I'm trying to say is, is that, it's not, it, it, yes, as fans, it might be an affront to us because he just doesn't look like our Aquaman. No, there's, there's more to it than that. But because I'm, I'm... for the people who aren't into comics and who don't know about it, they don't care. They're going to see the guy that they know from their favorite TV show. Which a lot of people like Game of Thrones uh, being Aquaman, so it's a win so, for them. No, no, for the but most this part, more... people who watch Game of Thrones know what Aquaman looks like. Bro. There are a lot of people for, who don't. For me, for me, there's more to it than that. I think he could pull it off, but like I've seen him in Conan, I've seen him as Khal Drogo. He don't. He doesn't have that many lines in those movies, and the few lines he does, I, I just he doesn't embody oh, like I don't well, know. Right, yeah, and I mean, it might he might be a great actor, and he might pull it off and be like, I, I might be totally stunned. But when they announced it, I was just like, "Really, him? Like right. well, all yeah, the I other people you could have picked?" I don't think that only because <laughs> then it's like, "How are you going to deliver these lines? How well can you be expected to deliver these?" Lines? Right. I, like I, I just that. don't. I don't see Aquaman mumbling or kind of like brr, 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 his lines. Like well, he's mean, not that, that. He's that, not that kind of brawl guy. That's the character he was casted to play in those in those mm-hmm. movies. And and like I said, in those from what I've seen of him, of him in other movies, I don't feel it. And maybe he's a great actor, and that's just what he did for those movies, and he'll be very different. But you know, just going off of what I know of, of him in other movies, I'm not feeling it. So and, and that, a, that, that has nothing to do with the look, although there is another part of me, the, the geek side, that's like, yo, he doesn't even look like him. Right. But that's so, not the hugest thing. So as we wrap up this topic, then who are you, who's your pick to be <clears throat> Aquaman? Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam, he is uh, most, most well from, known for... Uh, being Jax Teller on Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. No, I'm with Hov this, and I know you're going to like lose your mind. Because you disagree. I, I mean, personally, I would like to see Michael Fassbender or the actor who plays Eric from True Blood. I think they could you be gotta made... You got to pick one. You got to pick one. Michael Fassbender. Much. Could be made up to fit the role better. Now, I don't want him to double dip. He's doing Marvel stuff. Let him do Marvel stuff. But I'm just saying, <coughs> you anybody could be made up to fit a role. Um, Apparently not. Apparently not, because he don't look like him. Right. I mean, again, it, anybody could. They, they decided to go with Jason Momoa. I don't know what the decision was, but... That's wrapping up the show. That's wrapping up the show. Oh, that, he's wrapping up the show because he, he got the last word he's about in. He's to get chewed. He's trying to be a Ladies punk. and gentlemen, this man is running scared. We, we warned him before the show started that we were going to tear him up for his choice, and now it's the end of the show. But that's wrapping up the show and wrapping up the topic. <laughs> Send us what you think would be a better uh, Aquaman choice. Uh, Michael Fassbender or... For those of you who don't know, Michael Fassbender is Magneto and uh, right. and the newer adaptations of He also of plays X-Men. the android in Prometheus. So, again, take, you know, look up some of these characters. And he absolutely looks nothing like... As we wrap up the show, Aquaman. thank you, Aquaman. I appreciate... I, I appreciate uh, Jason Momoa, definitely hands down better friend than Magneto. You don't want to let go of the reins, but unfortunately... Oh, but it's so bad. That is a it's show. so bad. And, uh, how so, you gonna, how please, you gonna leave them with that? Please feel free to react right into us at 100 Proof Geek. Um, on Instagram and on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Facebook. We question of the week: Hunt Proof Geek uh, community. Uh, the question of the week is: Who's your pick for Aquaman? Who would you rather have seen be Aquaman? Whether it's a Puerto Rican guy or, or a white <laughs> guy or a British guy, whatever you want. But you can send that into Ask Jason Geek, Statham. Put him. Put a A S K on him. G E E K at one hundred proofgeek dot com. And again, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at one hundred proofgeek. Um, <coughs> That was the show. Thanks for the listen.